So the big question is this, how these entrepreneurs who started from scratch and had no idea how to sell or market their products or services online and then later on made over 6 figures, 7 figures or even 8 figures became best in their niches and found their dream customers to sell. My name is RJ Ahmed and find this all out in our interviews with entrepreneurs show. I interviewed these entrepreneurs and tried to pick their brain of how they actually did that and how they took their business as well as their life to the next level. This podcast is all about the entrepreneurs who strive so hard to become super awesome in their niches. Welcome to Interviews with Entrepreneurs. Welcome to Interviews with Entrepreneurs show where we interview entrepreneurs who are super awesome in their niches. And guys, we are back again with an amazing guest on our show. Today's guest is Dennis Yu. Dennis is actually a veteran in our space out there. You know, he is the CEO of Builds Metrics, co-author of the number one best-selling book on Amazon in social media, The Definitive Guide to TikTok Ads. He has spent over a billion dollars on Facebook ads in total across his agencies, which is mind-blowing. Not only that out there, he, you know, he's actually on a mission out there to create a million jobs in so many different places out there. Like how I actually met him, I was in a, uh, uh, you know, my friend was in a mutual event out there with Dennis, you know, I saw him, then I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the event and I'm going to meet Dennis as well. And I met him, it was amazing. So it's actually one of the very first guy who I met in person and like doing the interview with him as well. Not only that, he, he, you know, he became the part of like so many television network like CNN, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, so many uh, other places out there. Not only that, he's spoken over 750 conferences, which is astonishing, in 20 plus countries out there and have flown over 6 million miles. So let's hear the story from Dennis Yu himself. So please welcome Dennis Yu. Hey, Dennis. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Awesome. And even on a Saturday. Yeah, truly appreciate it. Well, you know, we're going to be like super fast out there. I want to know like quick, quick, a brief backstory out there, like how everything started for you. You started for almost like more than two decades ago. So like how things started for you initially? Yeah, I was a search engine engineer. I built the analytics at Yahoo, which is a search engine. And then there was more data that was coming from social networks. So I happened to be there at the right place at the right time. And I ran a bunch of Facebook ads when Facebook was brand new. And then we had TikTok. So now we have the number one best-selling book on yeah. social media, which happens to be on TikTok. And my career has been just wherever the data has been. I've been very lucky to be a database, search engine, big data kind of guy. And the more data there is, the more opportunity there is if we know how to use it. Mm, mm, that, that's interesting. So like since you've transitioned from one place to another out there, you know, as a search engine from Yahoo and then from Facebook, then to TikTok, how you were able to, you know, find the best time out there to get into those platforms out there, uh, you know, during the whole moment? The people who built the platforms are friends of mine. So the people mm. that we actually started with at Yahoo, a lot of them went to go work at Google. And a lot of the people who I knew at Google went to go work at Facebook. So my advantage is not because I'm smarter, but because I know who the other people are. And as you know, in business, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It's all about the relationships you have. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And you mentioned about relationships out there. How, you know, I know like most people out there take it for granted, you know, all they focus on making money, making money, ma- making money, but either one, nobody knows them and they don't know anyone. So like, how do you think about like building the relationship in the long term is a key factor particularly? Look, you can make money by being invisible. You can do yeah. cold calling. You can do lots of things that often are a starting point for people who don't know any better or don't have a network. But if you want to have a long-term mission, if you want to have a business that you're proud of, if you want to have a business that continues to make money instead of just there's one trick you have on Amazon or whatever that makes money and then goes away or some, you know, scammy or spammy or one-off little tactic that, you know, like for SEO, there's different tactics that work and then six months they don't work. Well, in the long run, everything is on relationships because in business things go up and down. And I know a lot of people who are very successful and they might be very good technically from what you might look at, but I can tell you behind anyone who has done well in business, not just online, but anywhere, they will always tell you it's their relationships. So I'll tell you a friend of mine four years ago, his name is Caleb Williams and he had no brand. Nobody knew who he was. He had no online presence and he started a YouTube channel. And I told him, 
make one minute videos, start interviewing people who are well known. And he produced a book. And just last week, he celebrated having 500 episodes on his podcast, which is wow. great because most people don't even make it to 100. But the difference between his podcast and all the other, I don't know how many 20 million podcasts that are out there. There's a lot of podcasts. Everyone is a podcast. But yep. the difference is that his podcast gets traffic. Mm. Hundreds of Interesting. Of views. And you know why? It's because when he interviews other guests, he honors them. He does the research about them. He promotes the episodes. He turns videos like this, he turns them into articles. He turns them into snippets that he puts on social media. He puts dollar a day ads against them. Right. So I'm famous for teaching dollar a day, yep. dollar a day on Twitter, dollar a day on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube. And he puts it out there. So when he interviews like a Garrett Gunderson, then he's going to target Garrett Gunderson's audience. So those people are able to see it because most podcasters, if they're lucky enough to even reach someone who's well known, their thing gets like 20 views or they're relying purely upon organic to be able to get views. Now, if you have a huge audience and you know, you're, a big time podcaster, you could probably do that. But if you're small and you're lucky enough to have somebody to agree to be on your show, you should try to get that thing up to a hundred thousand views. And that might mean you have to spend $200, $500, something like that. But that's, that's the key difference in building relationships. It's not just having the podcast because you might as well just have a one-on-one -on -one zoom interview, but what's the good. Yeah. About it? It's great that you can talk to somebody for free, someone who's well known on zoom or, you know, whatever the, the tool is. But if you want to grow your brand, you have to make visible the relationships that you have and to honor other people. You want to do the research in advance. You want to make sure you make the best use of their time. And then you want to share the things that they've said. And that's what grows your brand because then people see that you're associated with these other people. Hmm. Yeah, definitely out there. And it's, you know, it's so relatable for me personally out there, because as you mentioned about the relationship building and the story about the guy out there who did the podcast, you know, I kind of like did the exact similar thing. You know, I have a book called Decades and Days, which I interviewed like all of these successful entrepreneurs turn their wisdom in a book. So that's exactly what I did and send them the copy out there and they started to, you know, promote it to their audience out there. The part of the, you know, as, as you mentioned, the Dream 100 approach initially, you know, that was like one of the things out there that I did. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying you're doing the, the thing I'm telling you not to do. The, the biggest mistake that new entrepreneurs do is they promote themselves. Hmm. So when you promote yourself and it's all about you and all about your book and all about how awesome you are, it doesn't resonate with other people's audiences. So if, if like I told you, if I'm with Caleb Williams and I'm fortunate enough to be on his show and I was a few months ago, I didn't talk about me. I talked about how awesome Caleb is. Just like today, I'm talking yeah. about how awesome Caleb is. And therefore, when he shares that, when other people in my audience see that, and people in his audience see that, his audience will have credibility with me because they see that he and I are together and I'm honoring him. So he's able to benefit yeah. from my audience and vice versa. Now, when, when he's on my show and I've interviewed him, he's talking about how awesome it is to be on my show. He's talking about all the things that he's learned from me. Instead of him talking about himself, if I'm just talking about myself, then I'm a douchebag. Any of us, especially new entrepreneurs who talk about themselves, that's the number one mistake I believe of new entrepreneurs is trying to promote themselves. Mm. I get why they do it, Nothing. but it doesn't work. That's yeah. why if you want to, if you want to do the thing that causes all the other, all these other new entrepreneurs to fail, do what they're doing, right? The very thing that's causing them to fail, do what they're doing and you'll fail too. You can fail just like all the rest of them, but why would you want to do something that you know doesn't work? If you know that 99% of all the entrepreneurs out there are doing this thing that doesn't work, why would you do that too? Yeah, that's, that's definitely an interesting point out there that you mentioned, like 100%. Uh, you know, you mentioned out there, you know, something that you're really known for is a dollar a day ad. You know, could you like talk us about that, like how the initial concept came uh, for you particularly and how you thought about it and like how you actually position that uh, for yourself out there, particularly in every aspect. I've spent a billion dollars on ads and it's not because it's a lot of money. It's because it's a lot of testing. So mm. testing allows us to take a hundred different ads and figure out which one is the best, but you can't put a million dollars against each one. Even our biggest clients are not going to put a million dollars against each ad. We'll put a dollar a day for a week against each ad, find the group of winners, put more and more money. And then the winning, winning ad after many rounds, then we'll put a million dollars against it. 
And we've done that multiple times. We did it for Rosetta Stone, for example. We were spending a million dollars a day on ads. But we started with 100 ads to find one that won. Golden State Warriors, basketball team. We started with a dollar a day on ads. And we found certain ads just outperformed the other ads. You wouldn't have known. So RJ, if you and I were to look at a list of all these ads and try to figure out which ones do we think are the best ads, I would say, oh, I think it's this one, Steph Curry shooting this buzzer beating three pointer. And you would say, no, it's this other one where they win the championship and they're celebrating. And neither of us would be correct. It would be something that we would never know, but we'd have to test. And yeah. what I've learned in almost 30 years of doing digital marketing is you have to test everything and you think you might know better and you don't. The system mm -hmm. will tell you what keyword works the best, what ad works the best, what landing page, what offer, what component works the best. So dollar a day is nothing more than a testing methodology that happens to work really well in digital because there's more data. The more data there is, the more ability for the algorithm to optimize and the more our ability to let the algorithm do the work for us. But if you don't have the content, if you don't understand that you need to test, then you might as well just in basketball throw up a full court shot and hope that that'll go in. That is a very low probability if you only take one shot. I like to take many shots. Mm, yeah, love it, love it, hundred percent. You know, you mentioned about uh, you know creating a million jobs, and I remember you know uh, you, you came back from Pakistan out there, and I yeah. hope you enjoyed the, your trip to Pakistan particularly. I love Pakistan. Yeah, happy yeah, we got, tomorrow. Yeah. Like what you said? I'm saying happy Eid. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I was like watching uh, consistently, you know, enjoy, you enjoying Pakistan out there particularly. And yeah. you have planned for a million jobs overall particularly. And I know you have a core focus over here as well. So like you, you, you know, made it so much impact out there particularly. How you thought about, okay, like I'm, I'm going to have this goal right, right now in my mind. You know, I've done so many things out there. This is uh, one of the goals out there that I want to go for. Yeah. There's so much in Pakistan, so much opportunity. My friend Rehan Alawala invited me to Pakistan. Yeah. So I spoke at Future Fest. I was able to be there with, you know, um, Saqib Azar or Sunny Ali and other folks, which is great spending time with these other folks and interviewing them. But it wasn't about me. It's about their mission. And it's about what is extreme commerce doing? What is enablers doing? What is the Pakistan government doing for education, for entrepreneurship, for funding incubators. And yeah. so we created a group as one on Facebook, for example, on digital marketing with Dennis Yu, which now has 20,000 members, which is amazing. So we're creating jobs out of that. I think we hired three people yesterday just out of the group. But the thing is, if in Pakistan, you could be very intelligent, you could be very hardworking. But if you don't have connection to American companies that want to pay American dollars, and if you don't have the necessary training, and if you don't know how to talk to American companies and have the soft skills, then you're going to be stuck doing other things that you'd never have an opportunity to, to do. Cool. So we want to create those opportunities. And the biggest gap is that most of our Pakistani friends don't know how to communicate with American clients. And exactly. Communication skills you don't learn by watching YouTube. You learn cool. by you learn by engaging in the group. So that's why we want people to engage in the group. Learn how to make a one minute video. Learn how to say hello. Right? Learn how to speak clearly without grammatical errors. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I remember, you know, that's how we actually met as well. You know, there was a mutual friend of ours, you know, which was Wally. And then I met you over there in Future Fest and you know, we took a picture and all of those things out there initially happened. But yeah, like one thing that you said is absolutely true out there. There are some of the things that need to be optimized in order to you know move ahead with the things out there particularly. Yeah. Now, you know, in regards to that, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask a question in regard, uh, you know, for all people out there who are new, newbie entrepreneurs, particularly, you know, if they're starting out, how they can, you know, what's your advice going to be for them to stay, uh, you know, stay committed and, you know, stay relevant for the longest time. Since you've been in the space out there for a you know, long time, you are still relevant now. And I'm definitely sure you have a plan for the future as well. What's your advice going to be for the people out there who are either just starting out or in the space, stay relevant for the future, particularly? If you want to be relevant and if you want to be around a while instead of burning out in six months, like most entrepreneurs, you need to find other business partners. You need to find a mentor because if you try to do it all by yourself, I don't care how many Gary Vaynerchuk's and Tony Robbins videos you watch to motivate yourself every morning. 
you're not going to be able to be on fire every day. You're not going to always be 100% yep. every day. So you have to you have to be part of a team. There's no way around that. I know, you know, watching Marvel and Disney movies, there's the idea of the superhero. And we all believe we could be like Elon Musk and some kind of superhero. Elon Musk has a team. Richard Branson has a team. If you don't have a team, what happens when something bad happens? It's unexpected. There's always unexpected things that happen. You know, somebody rips you off, a key customer quits on you, something that you thought was going to happen that was really good, you know, didn't happen. There's always unpredictable things. And the only way to ride that out is to build a team. And that means you have to find a business partner, find a mentor, find other people to work with you or for you. Without a team, it's just you. And then if you're just a freelancer, and that's great. There's a lot of people who make money just as a solo freelancer. But you know, looking at the stats of millions of freelancers, most of them are up and down. You know, they get one project and they think they've su they succeeded and they're making this money. And then the project ends and they're back to zero again. And they start and they stop. And that's just not a good place to be. Maybe it's a good initial starting place just to get some experience. But if you want to stay in the industry, you don't want to be a one person show. You're never going to make it by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, that's, that's so amazing. And yeah, like, you know, I, I was interviewing a guy out there yesterday uh, on, a, on a previous episode out there, and he actually said something similar out there. You have to grow yourself as a team out there just to move ahead. You know, you can't be a solopreneur out there and can do everything by myself. Like how most people say, you know, we have a team and they're the only one. 100%, you know, that's amazing. You know, you co-authored a book around TikTok, which is the definite guide to TikTok ads. Yes. Uh, tell us like more about that as well. Yeah, like I've actually ordered it. I'm just waiting to get that book out there. Well, yeah, like tell us a bit more about that. Like what's this book is all about and like who is this for particular? People jump into TikTok because they believe it's a fad or they believe that TikTok is just for young girls that are singing and dancing. It doesn't apply to real business owners. We wrote this book for real business owners who are serving people that are not young adults, but people who have money. And the idea yeah. is that if you share your expertise and you speak 30 second videos, sharing just one tip at a time, that's all that's really required. Because if you're a real estate agent, you can speak, here's, the, here's what, what to do in Dallas, right? You're a real estate agent in Dallas, Texas. Here's what you need to know about this new community. Here is my friend who owns a restaurant here in Dallas. Here's a new house that I'm showing in Dallas. Oh, if you wanna buy a house in Dallas, Come talk to me. I've lived in Dallas 20 years, right? You're just sharing your expertise. And the key is with TikTok ads, the system is going to optimize for you just like with Facebook. So we're not trying to become viral, right? We're not trying to get millions of views. We're trying to drive business. And so there's a different business model for people that are trying to become famous and make money having millions of views versus business owners that have products and services, especially services, especially local services, dentist, doctor, real estate, garage door, you know, automotive, all of these guys that sell local services, TikTok allows us to zero in on that particular area. And yeah. it's great. The traffic is cheap. It's half the price, one third the price of Facebook. It converts just as well. You just have to be willing to make video as in cell phone, 15 to 30 second videos. You can have your customers make videos, your salespeople make videos, other team members and partners make videos. As long as they're cell phone style videos, you can run ads against it. And the biggest thing is you can run ads, you can boost other people's posts. So if you have customers that have said good things, you can boost those posts and those are called spark ads. Mm, interesting. That's, yeah. that's amazing, you know? Yeah, well, because... well, Facebook doesn't have it. The, the closest is the branded content tools, part of business manager, but yeah. almost no one knows how to use it. And it's very difficult to use. You have to know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, like one thing you messed up and like, damn, you know, you're out, you're out of the game. Out. Out of, out of, yeah. It's approved, it's difficult, it's confusing. Yeah. yeah, but TikTok is, I mean, there's parts of it that are confusing, but it's a lot easier. And we wrote the guide on exactly how to set those up. Well, you know, that's, that's amazing. And yeah, guys, like I will definitely going to post up the link. Uh, it's, I believe it's on Amazon out there. So I'm going to post up the link in the Amazon out there so you can get your copy out there. I've ordered my copy. I'm just waiting to get it. Definitely going to read it as well. Going to leverage it. Well, uh, then it's one of the last things that I want to ask out there is, you know, since you've been in the space from a lot of time out there, done so much things out there, what is the number one thing that you 
felt like a self achievement like ah you know this is something out there i'm like super proud of like what do you think about it i never think about it that way as being super proud because i'm always thinking about what the next thing is you know if you're climbing the mountain and you're a third of the way up the mountain sure you could look back and you can see wow i've really climbed a long way up the mountain but the uh, the distance ahead of of me is so much further than how far i've already come So I've had certain wins, right? I've met some important people. You can Google me and you can see who I'm hanging yep. out with. I'm not going to name drop. You can see who the people are that I've, I've been spending time with, right? But it's it's not that, wow, look, I was able to interview so-and-so or I met the president of this country or here I am with this other very important person who's famous. It's that I'm working together with these people and I'm grateful that we are creating jobs together and these people want to create jobs with me. I'm humbled that they would believe that I am a worthy partner to work with them and their country to be able to create jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Truly truly appreciate it Dennis for that. You know, I really love your humbleness like how humble are you? You know, I met you at that, you know, at Future First out there even though it wasn't like a long conversation out there, but you know, I really like how you, the way you operate the things out there. So, you know, huge props to you. Awesome. Well, thank you RJ. Truly appreciate it. And yeah guys like thank you so much for being the part of the show out there. I will post all of the social media links of Dennis as well. So you're going to be the part of his world and Dennis thank you so much for being on the show and we'll definitely going to see you guys in the next episode. Until then, peace out.